All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and today I have some pretty insane news actually. This has been something that I and a lot of other people have been kind of hoping is going to happen for a long time now. It seems like pretty much any time any sort of like negative news about the YouTube platform comes out or they make a new change to something on the website that people don't like. One of the most popular pieces of feedback or one of the more popular responses that we oftentimes see is, oh, I wish Susan Watch Kiki would step down as CEO of YouTube. I wish she would get canned. I wish she wasn't in control anymore. It's almost like it's been a day that we've all been waiting for for years now. It's that like forbidden end of the entire cycle. I don't know, man, but we finally have gotten the news that we've all been long awaiting, I guess, here as Susan Watch Kiki has announced that she will be stepping down as the CEO of YouTube and she will be replaced by YouTube's current chief product officer. He goes by the name Neil. Mohan. Uh, I don't know too much about him, to be honest. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know this guy or anything, but obviously a pretty major shakeup for the YouTube platform, right? We have somebody new who is going to be kind of calling the shots. It's going to kind of be leading the platform going forward. And obviously this is pretty incredible timing because YouTube is in a very, I would say, transitionary, if that's even a word, point in its life cycle right now. I feel like YouTube has had a couple of really big make it or break it moments throughout its lifespan. Early on, you know, as it was catching on with everybody as the premier video destination on the internet, it had to make a name for itself, and that it did. It basically brought forward viral content through video platforms online. Obviously has become by far the biggest video platform online. Then, of course, they got bought by Google, and the question then was, is this just a one-hit wonder, or can we turn this into something that is actually monetizable and can actually last for years to go forward? And, well, of course, it did. And now we've seen YouTube transition into this point where it's a cable provider, it's a short form and long form video content platform, and a social media wrapped all up into one. And then now, of course, it's been facing its biggest threat possibly of its entire lifetime with platforms like TikTok popping up and becoming popular and popularizing short form content, which YouTube is now transitioning into and starting to pivot focus onto as well. But we're kind of at this point in time now where YouTube's future, I wouldn't say is uncertain, but there's a lot of questions to be had. You know, people are wondering what's coming next. What do we expect next? And now we really don't know what to expect, right? So obviously to a lot of you guys, this is going to be great news, right? Like, oh, Susan Watch Kiki. Oh, she's finally stepping down, bro. We're free. I've been people, I've been seeing people online saying things like, oh my God, YouTube's finally back. Oh, YouTube's going to get so much better now because she's not in control and there's no way the next CEO could possibly make this platform any worse than it is now. And I kind of just want to talk about that in today's video, man, because I feel like people are kind of jumping the gun just a little bit with this whole Susan Watch Kiki news. Now, I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy, and I'm not trying to, you know, ruin the fucking cake and ice cream for everybody else at the birthday party here, but while this is a positive development on one end, there is a lot of horrible negatives that are now kind of potential, and I don't think people have really looked this far into it or given it this much thought, I feel like most of the people kind of just saw the news that she's stepping down and they're like, happy, right? They didn't look into it anymore. They don't really think about it anymore other than that. But realistically, I just kind of want to talk about the future of the YouTube platform because, well, it's up in the air now. I mean, honestly, it's up in the air. You really never know what you're going to get until you get it with a CEO or someone stepping in and taking charge like this. And that's the huge problem for me here, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys, well, honestly, I'm not going to say I, You guys have noticed if you have a brain, I feel like, but over the last few years, YouTube has been moving down this really kind of shitty road, right? And don't get me wrong, their products have been amazing, you know? They've introduced more monetization features for creators. There's things like creator music where you can lease and license music uh, for your creative endeavors on YouTube. All kinds of different things. They've been bringing out YouTube shorts and making that platform better for people and stuff, so they, they've been doing good on that part, but of course, there's the creator side of it, and we have not had a very good relationship with YouTube for a long time. The vast majority of YouTube creators I know absolutely despise the people running the platform because not only are a lot of them completely incompetent and don't actually have any understanding of what a creator goes through and what the ecosystem we've built on this platform really functions like, but there's also been a lot of societal changes that have led YouTube to become a lot more restrictive on what types of content that you can upload. Demonetization continues to be a recurring problem. Copyright abuse on the platform continues to be a major problem. 
comment bots pretending to be creators like me and trying to scam people in my comments has remained a major problem on the platform. The list goes on and on, and I feel like a lot of people are just kind of attributing all of those messes to just one person, and that being Susan Wajkiki. And yeah, of course, it's easy to find a scapegoat. It's easy to point the finger at her because she was in charge, but this is a platform with tens of thousands, probably, of employees, right? The, there's a lot of people working behind the scenes, and a lot of the issues with YouTube that she she did oversee were happening in departments that I feel like sh the CEO probably isn't getting in contact with. I mean, are they really talking with, you know, the people reviewing manually people's content with the CEO? I doubt it, man. They're probably just talking to like a content quality team or something. There's just a lot of issues I feel like people attributed to Susan Watch Kiki as a person that are still going to exist. And I feel like when people finally kind of get that come to earth moment, you know, where they realize like, oh, hey, the platform isn't just magically and mysteriously fixed overnight. Now that Susan Watch Kiki is out of control, you know, they're, they're gonna, of course, point the finger probably at the new guy, this Neil Mohan, right? He's gonna be the new Susan Watch Kiki and all this, right? But I don't think people have really taken the time to realize, like, what fresh blood in this position could really mean. And to kind of supplement my point, I want to take a look at other social media platforms, including YouTube, of course, but just kind of take a look at the trend that I've noticed over social media over the last few years. I've noticed that since probably really the COVID-19 pandemic onward, right, there has been a mass restriction, really, of what you can kind of get away with online, right? I feel like back, well, I mean, like in 2019, you couldn't have gotten away with some of the content that was okay in 2016, but in 2019, I feel like you could get away with a lot more than you can in 2023, right? So as time goes on with these social media platforms and these websites online, right, it seems like they become a lot more restrictive, right, because they want to please advertisers, they don't want controversy versus in the news constantly involving their company name, things like that, right? So all of that like more censorship based shit that people have been complaining about with YouTube over the last few years, that is not going to magically go away now that Susan Watch Kiki is not in control anymore. In fact, I want to present the possibility that it could actually get much, much worse. We don't really know, at least I don't really know, a whole lot about this Neil Mohan guy, right? I've never heard his name, didn't even know he worked at YouTube, right? And now suddenly he's the CEO of the platform, which means for me at least, I don't know any of this guy's positions on really anything. This guy could love censorship, he could love shutting down different opinions and shit like that, and we've seen social media platforms in recent memory going out of their way to basically get involved or manipulate the discussion of things online. And on YouTube, of course, we've seen, you know, them be much more policing of the types of content that are acceptable on the platform and things like that. These issues are not just going to go away because there's a new CEO in charge of things at YouTube. In fact, depending on where this guy stands, it could get a lot worse. You know, if this guy, if he thinks that, you know, oh, YouTube is too expressive of a platform, people are spreading misinformation, hatred and whatnot, he could just decide to make more decisions that are going to make the platform even more restrictive. Or maybe he is worse than Susan Watch Kiki altogether and he just doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. That is also a possibility. People haven't really taken the time to consider that. I feel like when people said things like, oh, we, we need to get Susan Watch Kiki out of CEO at YouTube, and I've been one of those people, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I haven't called for her to be fired either, but what we didn't really realize is whoever comes after her, it's going to be a complete fucking roll of the dice, like in terms of what we're getting, you know? We, we have no idea yet. We're going to have to wait months, if not years even, to start getting a real true grasp of just what exactly is going to be happening to the platform that we've all come to know and love. So I just kind of want everyone to pump the brakes a little bit. Like, yeah, it's great. Susan Watch Kiki is no longer in control. Hopefully someone's going to fill the position right. But if I'm being honest, like if I'm in Vegas, right, and I got, you know, my life savings with me or whatever, right, and I'm sitting there at the blackjack table, I'm putting 90%, maybe 95, 96% of everything I own in my bank account on the fact that it's going to probably be worse. And I hate to say that. I hate to be negative. I hate to take a moment that we've all been looking forward to and just be like, oh, it's a, well, it's going to get worse. But I mean, just looking at the history of how social media has worked and just looking at the trend, even on YouTube over the last few years, these companies are filled with employees with overwhelmingly the same ideas. Okay. It's not like these companies have like a diverse mentality of people with all differing types of opinions. We've seen the people who work at these companies. Let's be honest. They're overwhelmingly liberal, they're overwhelmingly younger, Gen Z, younger millennials, and they're overwhelmingly willing to 
influence the discussion on these platforms based on their own personal beliefs. And I'm not sitting here saying like, oh, conservatives are being attacked. I'm not here to make a political message. I'm just saying what's obvious. These platforms have clearly been biased over the last five or so years. And I'm not even saying on a political scale. I'm just saying on a fundamental scale. YouTube has been biased against content creation. YouTube has been suppressing specific types of content that they deem not advertiser friendly or not brand friendly for YouTube. These types of decisions don't just go away overnight. These are things that are planned out meticulously. They invest budget into making these decisions. This shit doesn't just go away. And that's the unfortunate reality of the situation we're in here. Like, yeah, would it be nice to be able to say that YouTube is finally free from the fucking grips of horrible running? No. I mean, that'd be nice, but that's just not where we're at. So when Neil Mohan takes control of YouTube and he shows me over an extended period of time that he's better than Susan Waj Kiki, I'm going to get excited. But unfortunately, we've seen this song and dance before, man. Like YouTube, ha there's been moments where we're like, oh, the platform's finally turning around. It's finally getting better. And then guess what? They find some new way to piss on the parade and screw everything up for everybody, man. So while I'm really excited to see what the future of YouTube is and how my content and my channel is going to play a role in the entire thing. I'm not ready to just be hyped that this guy is in control. I want to see the policies that he enacts. I want to see what he does to gain my respect first. I don't want everyone to just immediately start rushing into this with the wrong mentality, just believing everything's going to be okay, because that might not be the case. So with that being said, though, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel, follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to optimus. Make sure to check out Shoptimus down below. Thank you to my watch Optimus subscribers. Your support helps the channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus, well, talking about the new Switch at YouTube and signing out.